Let's do a few more examples of finding the writing the electron configuration, the condensed electron configuration, uh, using the periodic table. So let's go over to the periodic table. Uh, the first one we want to look at is cobalt. So cobalt is here, and we're going to go. Uh, we're going to write the condensed. So we'll go up to the row before. So we're in row four, and we're going to go up to row three, which is here. And we'll start with argon, argon, and then 4s2. And now the D block starts at three, and we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven steps. So we have argon, 4s2, 3d7. Right, so we have argon, 4s2, 3d7. That's the electron configuration. Um, and the number of valence electrons are out here. We have nine, we have seven D and uh, two on the S T E tellurium, which is element 52. Element 52 is down here. So you're gonna go up one row to Krypton and then you are in row five. So then we have five S two and now the D block starts at four. So four D 10, that's completely full and then back over to 5p, and then 5p, 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's Krypton, right, and then we're in row 5, so we got 5s2. D starts one below whatever row you're in, so this is 4, there's 10 steps over here, 4d10, and then 5p4. Uh, we can write all that down. All right, we had Krypton, Kr. 5s2, 4d10, and 5p4. Now with this one, since the d block is full here, our number of valence electrons are just the outermost s and p. So you see how 4 is, uh, so the d block is um, 4, has an energy level 4. We want this guy and this guy to be our valence electrons, the outermost S and P. That only happens when the, you have 10 D electrons, those count as core. So we have six valence electrons out here. This guy has um, we have nine valence electrons. Uh, and then we should be able to do this the other way too. Identify the specific element based on its electron configuration and then indicate the number of unpaired um, electrons for each. So I was just counting up the number of valence electrons in those. We can look at unpaired electrons as well. We're looking at the orbital diagrams. So 1s2, 2s1, I have three electrons. So if you go back to the periodic table, I have three total electrons. That's lithium. Right, so that's lithium. And if you were to look at the orbital diagram, right, I have 1s and I have 2s. I have one unpaired electron, right? One unpaired electron, UPE. Here I have five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine electrons. So you go to the periodic table, find element nine, which is fluorine. My goodness. Fluorine, nine. And the you could either do the noble gas, you could say helium, and then 2s2, 2p5. If you want to write it all out, you had. This is fluorine. We have 1s2, 2s2, uh, 2p5, right? 2p5, that's right there. That's what's given to us. Um, and if we wanted to look at how many valence electrons, it would be those outermost. So that's 5 plus 2, that's 7. And if you wanted to draw the orbital diagrams, we have 1s, that's full. 2s, this is full. And then 1, 2, 3 for your 2p. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So he also has one unpaired electron there. And the last one, you have argon, 4s2, 3d6. So you basically have 2 plus 6, you have 8 electrons beyond argon. That's another way to think that. Think of that. Whoops. 8 valence electrons beyond argon. So I have 8 uh, plus 18, right? So we're going to go to 26 here. Um, so I have the 4s2 and then, I'm sorry, 4, yeah, 4s2 and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, 46. So I know I have iron. Um, then we can look at how many unpaired electrons we have. So I know this is going to be iron, which is right, Fe. 
and then unpaired electrons. Let's just look at the valence electrons. This 4s2 is full, and then I have 1, 2, 3, boy, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Is that 5? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 d, um, d orbitals, and I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So the rest of these are unpaired. So I have four unpaired electrons there. Total valence electrons, in this case, I would have eight valence electrons. Four of them are not paired. So just to summarize again, in general, um, if you have a completely filled D or F, or F or subshell, if they're filled, uh, they we don't consider them to be valence electrons. Um, if you have transition elements, um, we don't consider right full F block either. So if you have um, partially filled, then they will count in the uh, number of valence electrons. We have some anomalies, and this table down here is just full of anomalies. So anomalies, it's not following the rules, and so basically some here this this block here, chromium, and our copper block. They give us um, electron configurations that are kind of confirmed by experiments when you count the number of unpaired electrons that are not the typical rule. So if you look at chromium, chromium over here, you would expect it to be argon and then 4s2, 3d4, right? That's what we would expect it to be. Expected, expected, we would expect it to be if it followed the rule, argon and then 4s2, 3d4, right? Which would look like um, 4s2, and then 1, 2, 3, 4. But what actually happens is this, this electron over here actually appears over here. And so the electron configuration really looks like, not this one, but it looks like argon, and then 4s1, uh, 3d5. So what happens here? The 4s and the 3d orbitals are actually really close in energy, and once you start filling those electrons in, they almost switch places. They start to switch places where the uh, the d becomes um, higher in energy than than the s. Like it starts to equalize at this point, and so it's actually better to half fill everyone before you start pairing them because they're so close in energy. And people still debate exactly why this is, but they can confirm experimentally that you have six unpaired electrons. Uh, in chromium and instead of having um, four, right, if this one was over here. Same thing kind of happens with copper. If you look at copper, you would expect that electron configuration to be argon and then 4s2, 3d9, right? You would expect it to be argon and then 4s2, 3d9, but something similar happens here, right? Instead of having, well, draw it up here, right? So now we have 11 electrons. Instead of having 4s2, boom, there we go, 2, 4, 6, 8, 9, this electron again, this guy over here, comes out and goes over here, and it's more energetically favorable for you to have a full D block and one um, unpaired S electron here. So that's not the real one, what you really get. These are anomalies, right? So you don't know this just by looking at it. You know it because I'm telling you now. You have to memorize these exceptions to the rule. So when it's more favorable for you to have a half-filled, um, if you can get a half-filled D or a full uh, D block, then you get um, these anomalies happening here. Lots of anomalies happening in the F block, so we're not even gonna go there. But if you wanna see, so the same thing happens here for copper and for silver and for gold, um, and then for chromium and molybdenum kind of sorts itself out over here for tungsten. But so these two rows are the ones, two columns are the ones where you'll see some anomalies.